Hey there, all you beautiful Texans. Welcome back to The James Show. It's News Talk 820 WBAP, now on FM at 93.3. Yay, let's go. Woohoo! Happy Wednesday. Guess what? Newsflash. You're a fascist again. I know. I, I'm sorry about the bad news. I really hate to be the one to tell you, but we were making the jokes yesterday. Like, why would Kamala take the day off if she's up in her attic trying to find her old name tag for McDonald's or something? And it turns out that she was just making, I know, haha. Uh, she was just making a video claiming that Trump's a fascist. He's very fascisty. And uh, therefore, his supporters are fascist. My first guest, Matthew Wilson, back on with SMU. Is that a good way to win over voters is to convince them that uh, the guy they're voting for is a fascist? Well, it certainly appears to be a big part of the strategy now for the Democratic side in the last two weeks of the campaign. I mean, you would think that they had pretty much gone as as hard all in against Trump as they could possibly go. But but apparently not quite, because uh, the, the rhetoric is really amping up and these kind of increasingly over the top warnings about how Trump will destroy everything that's good and true and beautiful about America if he's given another chance in office. Uh, I mean, I don't know that that will be effective, but but clearly Democrats have decided that they need to lean hard into that. Well, I think a lot of people are dismissive about that. And uh, the, I think they forget that there's a lot of people who are young or maybe just now entering the political process and they don't actually have their minds made up and if they see everywhere that they turn people calling trump a fascist you know i I think a lot of people do just what they think will get them the least amount of resistance in society you know that's why so many people went along with like the mass mandates or these other policies that they otherwise disagree with and if they see fascists enough places they'll just kind of go along with it well i mean i I think that's uh, the hope of those who are deploying that strategy. But the difficulty it runs up against is, of course, we've had a term of Trump as president. And a lot of people look back at that and they say, well, I may have liked that. I may not have liked that. I may have thought he was a good president. I may not have thought he was a good president. But you know, he, didn't, he did not institute a fascist dictatorship. He did not jail his political adversaries. He didn't close down critical media outlets. All this kind of stuff that's being talked about now did not happen when Trump actually held the office last time. So that means that there's a kind of a higher hurdle for Democrats who are making that argument to clear because they've got to convince people that, well, but this time will be different. This time will be so much worse. And, you know, that's that's to some degree a hard sell. Well, let's talk about uh, the early voting so far. Are you the kind of guy that's already done a deep dive and started picking through the numbers and and figuring things out? (laughs) A little bit, but I think we got to be really cautious about that because the early voting patterns shift with just about every electoral cycle. Um, it seems pretty clear, not just in Texas, but I mean around the country, that Republicans have become more comfortable with early voting than they used to be. And so more Republicans are doing it than has been true in the past. Uh, so the, the numbers, therefore, look pretty good for Republicans in states like Nevada and Arizona and North Carolina, where they are running well ahead of their previous early voting pace. Now, of course, here in Texas, we we can't say anything very definitive because we don't have registration by party. So we don't know whether the people voting here early are Democrats or Republicans. Um, I will say one slightly good sign for Republicans is that in the Metroplex, at least, um, almost every county has uh, surpassed, it's uh, equaled or surpassed its previous high watermarks for early voting, except for Dallas County. Uh, And Dallas County, of course, is the most Democratic county in the Metroplex, and its early voting numbers lag a little bit behind what we've uh, seen in in previous cycles. So that's maybe a little bit of a good sign for Republicans. But, you know, you got to be cautious because, like I say, we don't know exactly who these people are. who are showing. Right. It might just be uh, all the Democrats in these other counties were the ones who got those early voting numbers up. Uh, So what what do you think about the stuff? I don't know if you've seen this on social media, people complaining about uh, their their ballots being not correct in i think it was tarrant county there was a report or white settlement there was some reports and and i've seen it kind of floating across the news Uh, any of that uh strike you as a red flag well i mean it's obviously something that needs to be corrected and there were i did see there were some um 
isolated reports of of glitches at particular polling stations. And, you know, that's in part, that's why people do get a printout of their ballot so they can look at it and see, is this right? Is this what I actually intended to enter? And of course, if it's not, they should immediately flag that with uh, the uh, election officials who are there. Um, I mean, look, I think I think overall that this is people's votes are going to be recorded accurately. I, I don't think there's some sort of grand conspiracy or anything to, to change people's votes, but there can be machine error. There can be inaccuracies and, and glitches. And so people need to be attentive and make sure that the printout that they get actually matches what their intended vote was. Are we out of October surprise season? Because there's sort of the theory that if it happens too late, it's not going to have an effect. Do you think uh, the, the idea that there could be a big surprise that changes the election, we're done with that? I don't think we're entirely done with it, but it is true that as more and more people vote early, uh, you don't have to the same degree the concept of election day. Uh, Estimates are that this year, uh, probably slightly more than half of the total national vote will be cast before election day. Right. So election day itself is only going to see about half uh, of the uh, of the total votes. So, you know, the, the closer you get to election day, the less impactful um, any new developments can be just because there's so much uh, is already in the can in terms of people having already voted. Uh, so but but I, that all that said, I wouldn't discount you know, some sort of strange event happening in these last two weeks, because Lord knows we've seen a strange enough campaign so far with assassination attempts and the president dropping out, the former president being convicted of felonies. I mean, it's been a crazy ride so far. So, all right. When are you going to start that podcast, Matt? (laughs) I don't don't want to compete with you. You know, I mean, I, you know, I don't want, why would I, uh, why would I want to, you know, perhaps take listeners away from your show? Well, you know what I think is maybe we could integrate it into the show. We just have like a once a week segment, like text this Texas history segment or political history segment with uh, Matthew Wilson. And then we'll chop that up and we'll have it. uh, Those segments will be its own podcast that lives somewhere else online. That is, that is not a bad idea. Maybe we should talk about that. All right. Well, Garrett's in charge of me, so let's run it by him. (laughs) All right. Thank you very much. Matthew Wilson from SMU. Hey there. Welcome to The James Show. It's News Talk 820 WBAP. Now on FM at 93.3. Your reports from early voting. Let's do that again. We did that yesterday, and I really enjoyed it. And you can call in 800-288-9227. But I got far more uh, Facebook messages and a few emails and an Instagram message, actually, uh, of people talking about their experience early voting. And look, even if you think, oh, I didn't have anything spectacular happen to me, I like getting the ones where it says, hey, I went in, I was out in 18 minutes from the time I stood in line until the time I was back in my car. And then you just tell me the location and that's it. I love hearing it. My email is james at wbap.com. By the way, somebody emailed me at james at wbap.com yesterday. And asked me for Casey's email, and I'm like, I'm Casey at WBAP.com. That's happened again. Actually, it happened in reverse, because it was about a month ago, someone emailed Ernie at Ernie at WBAP.com asking for my email address, James, WBAP.com. So something that we were uh, uh, laughing about yesterday is Kamala took the day off, and that's pretty suspect, considering 14 days away from... You know, your presidential election, how many times you get to run for president in your life? Most people, you know, it's just a one shot deal. It didn't seem like a good idea to take the day off. So what was she doing yesterday? I don't know what she did with most of her day, but I know she spent part of it making a video saying Trump's a fascist. And then really by implication, by proxy, you're, if not a fascist yourself, at least someone who's so dumb or so duped that you're supporting a fascist. But she's at the Naval Observatory, which... I mean, it sounds official, but that's just where the vice president lives. Did you even know that? Like, they don't live in the White House because all you have to do is bomb one building and you've knocked out the head of our our government. They make them live across the river or whatever it is at the Naval Observatory. So she was at her government sanctioned house. And I'm going to play the whole thing. Um, She's not a fan of you. I'm, I'm getting the impression, but she's definitely not a fan of Trump. And something that you and I've been watching after one attempt that got his ear bloodied and a couple of close calls. Are they going to tap down the rhetoric? Absolutely not. They're not going to tap down the rhetoric. They're still going with the fascist stuff. Trump's former chief of staff, John Kelly, a retired four-star general, confirmed that while Donald Trump was president, 
He said he wanted generals like Adolf Hitler had. Donald Trump said that because he does not want a military. All right, hang on a second. How about we start a new thing? You remember in Pee Wee's Playhouse how they had the secret word and Conky would give out the secret word? Today's secret word is jump. And then if anyone said jump, it would just... Hey! I think Hitler's going to be our secret word. Anytime someone says Hitler, it just, hey, we win. We all get a prize. That is loyal to the United States Constitution. He wants a military that is loyal to him. He wants a military who will be loyal to him personally. One that will obey his orders even when he tells them to break the law or abandon their oath to the Constitution of the United States. In just the past week, Donald Trump has repeatedly called his fellow Americans the enemy from within, and even said that he would use the United States military to go after American citizens. Look, that's funny. He called some Americans the enemy within. Well, so what? You call us racist, sexist, bigot, homophobe, Nazi, fascist. The enemy from within is pretty mild. Yes, they are my political opposition, and they live within my country's borders. That's not anything really sensational compared to what I get called on a daily basis, what Trump gets called. You're calling him a fascist right now, saying, can you believe he calls, he speaks this way about his political opponents? And this is all fantasy. This is like Handmaid's Tale, where they they just imagine this horrible dystopian future of what might be, but... It's total fantasy considering he was already president for four years and all this fantasy that you're conjuring up in his head, uh, in your head, he didn't do it then. So in, unless you have some evidence that he's a drastically different person now, it just you have no evidence. This is just all sort of fan fiction. I continue or she continues within and even said that he would use the United States military to go after American citizens. And let's be clear about who he considers to be the enemy from within. Anyone who refuses to bend a knee or dares to criticize him would qualify in his mind as the enemy within. Yes, anyone who disagrees with you politically is a political opponent. I mean, you're not saying anything. You're saying it like it's supposed to be scary and you're pretending like your voice is quivering and you're talking about something with extreme gravitas. But you know whose political enemies are? People who disagree with him. Yeah, exactly. That's what a political opposition is. It's not anything scary. If I want uh, taxes to go down and you want taxes to go up, you're my political opposition. That doesn't mean I'm going to use the military to round you up and put you in camps. How do I know? He was already president for four years. Like judges, like journalists, like nonpartisan election officials. How many judges and journalists got rounded up by the military and put in jail when he was president for four years? What's the number? Oh, yeah, that's right. Zero. It is deeply troubling and incredibly dangerous. That Donald Trump would invoke Adolf Hitler, the man hey, who's responsible is. for the deaths of six million Jews. We win. And hundreds of thousands of Americans. All of this is further evidence for the American people of who Donald Trump really is. Man, that's crazy. Like, like the, the, the level of projection here. You got to watch it. They're, they're going to round people up. They're their political opponents and they're going to arrest them and just charge them with crimes and just make up crimes. Who's going to do that? Oh, that guy we arrested and got a 34 felony slapped on him. Oh yeah, that guy. That's he's he's the oppressive dictatorial one we got to worry about. He's the fascist. That's Hitler. The guy that just got 34 felonies a couple of months ago. Yeah. Look out for this him. This is a window into who Donald Trump really is. Who Hitler? From the people who know him best. From the people who worked with him side by side in the Oval Office and in the Situation Room. And it is clear from John Kelly's words that Donald Trump is someone who I quote, certainly falls into the general definition of fascists. Oh, she almost said it. Who in fact vowed to be a dictator on day one and vowed to use the military as his personal militia to carry out his personal and political vendetta. Yeah, you already said that part. Donald Trump is increasingly unhinged and unstable. I don't think she's going to say it again, Garrett. And in a second term, People like John Kelly would not be there to be the guardrails against his propensities and his actions. Those who once tried to stop him from pursuing his worst impulses would no longer be there and no longer be there to rein him in. So the bottom line is this. We know what Donald Trump wants. He wants unchecked power. 
The question in 13 days will be, what do the American people want? Thank you. Yeah, the guy that's been arrested, charged with crimes, 91 crimes in four different states. You better watch out because he's going to politically go after his uh, opponents and he's going he's gonna to try and throw them in jail. Look out for that guy. All right, uh, coming up next, I'm going to ask you, is early voting really going smooth thus far or are the losers not worried because they know the fix is in? 800-288-9227. I would love to hear your reports from early voting as well. Keep the messages coming. And for those of you trying to win the trip to see Motley Crue in Vegas, I've got a keyword for you now. I know you're, there's a few people who email me about this if I miss one. Uh, young. That's your keyword right now. Text the word young, Y-O-U-N-G, to 95819. 95819 for your next chance to win the trip to Vegas to see Motley Crue. For contest rules, WBAP.com. To be an adjunct reporter on The James Show and tell me about your early voting experience, 800-288-9227. I'm James Parker. This is The James Show, News Talk 820 WBAP, now on FM at 93.3. Hey there, all you beautiful Texans. Welcome back to The James Show. It's News Talk 820 WBAP, now on FM at 93.3. How was your experience early voting? Let's talk about it. 800-288-9227. 800-288-9227. We'll get to some freelance James Show reporters coming up after our next guest, Aaron Pom- Pomerantz, is back on. Welcome back to the James Show, Aaron. And with just 13 days to go, uh, a lot of people were speculating Kamala was taking the day off yesterday because uh, she's seeing some things in the polls that are causing her to repivot. Now that we see what she's doing come out of the gates, do you think that was why she took the day off? I mean, maybe. I mean, she, she's the, the issue here is that we're, we're not, I think we're still not sure how people are doing coming out of the gates. You know, we're at record turnouts here for early voting. And yeah, there's a lot of Republicans who are early voting, but there are a lot of Democrats as well. And it's, I mean, the the numbers I heard right before we, we, uh, when we were doing the commercial break was like a 30% increase for Republicans. And then that there are similar outcomes for Democrats. So maybe she was taking the day off, but we'll have to see. Yeah, and this seems to be bucking the trend where early voting and absentee voting and mail-in voting, these these were all exceptions, and most people voted on Election Day. And we're thinking we may, might have half the, the votes in before we even get to Election Day. Yeah, I think the Republicans have finally caught on and, and caught up. You know, Donald Trump does not like early voting. He does not like absentee voting. But... A lot of the strategists and people who, you know, actually determine what messages go out, they've wised up. There, there's an actual call for Republicans to early. And I think that's really smart because voting can take a really, really long time these days. You know, it can take up, it can take like an hour in line. And that was just for, that's just for the primary election. So yeah. getting people out can really, I think, help both sides here. Yeah, here in Texas, we've been early voting since Monday, and I've been uh, fielding reports. And a few of them have said it's taken over an hour, but most people have it much lower than that. Uh, early voting also seems to be something that is more popular in red jurisdictions versus uh, 2020 compared to blue jurisdictions versus 2020. Uh, do you think that's going to spell out uh, more of a victory for Trump, or are we just seeing more Democrats come out in these otherwise red areas is the big question, I guess. I mean, we won't really know until the votes are counted. Uh, my suspicion, though, is at least here in Texas, there's a lot of worry that that state's getting purpler and purpler. There's becoming a lot sharper of a red-blue divide. So it, it wouldn't surprise me at all that Republicans are just you know, scared and turning out more to try to support their candidates. But like I said, we don't know that we're going to it's going to really have to depend on on what we see after the votes are actually counted. Right. And, you know, it's going to make sense that these early votes will decide the election in many of these states, because in the swing states like in Pennsylvania, Donald Trump's up by zero point eight percent. He's up by zero point four percent in North Carolina, zero point four percent in Wisconsin. So these tiny little slivers of uh, of difference here. Oh, yeah. Early voting is going to make the difference in this election in some of these states for sure. Yeah, and I think what's really going to determine isn't just the early voting, it's the undecided voters. And that's that's really interesting because we're playing ping pong at the polls, basically, in terms of who leads when and how. 
I think a lot of people are still deciding day by day who do they like more and who do they, or rather maybe who do they dislike less. And once you cast your vote, I mean, it's yeah. not like you can go back to the polling place and say, actually, I've changed my mind. You know, that, that's it. No, I like so, your description there. That This is really coming down to who do you dislike less, I think, for, for many people. For the diehard Trumpers, or for the diehard Team Blue people, of course, they love their candidate, they love their party, and they love their team. But th- that's not who's going to decide the election. It's, it's these people in the middle. And uh, they're, they're making these decisions a little earlier than they used to. Aaron Pomerantz, how do they find your work outside of WBAP? You can find me on the Young Voices website and at APOM92 uh, on Twitter. Hey there, welcome to the James Show, News Talk 820 WBAP, now on FM at 93.3. Welcome to the big show. We are now 13 days away from election 2024, and what are we going to talk about after that? Man, I have no idea. Probably nothing. I'll probably just turn on the mic, and we'll just sit here in silence for 15 minutes until the next traffic breaker. Kimberly's got to do the news or something. We'll just, I, I don't know. I don't know what we'll do after this. I'm kidding. We'll go back to doing normal shows. In fact, it'll be uh, be pretty easy to keep the storylines going after this election. My next guest, Sergeant Betsy Brantner-Smith, back on from the National Police Association. First off, welcome back to The James Show. Great to have you back on. Thanks for having me back, as always. All right, first thing I want to talk to you about is the revised violent crime numbers. This is something you had actually speculated on The James Show. And when the, the numbers come out and they were touted uh, you know, about crime going down, we had actually talked on previous episodes about how these numbers are kind of soft because uh, some of the major metropolitan areas hadn't reported on it, plus there's still revisions to come. Turns out your skepticism was right, Betsy. Well, absolutely. This is the thing. The federal government has upgraded their uh, crimes. And and again, these go back to 2022, Um, the increase in crime. uh, They found 80,000 more violent crimes, including 3,000 more robberies, 7,000 more rapes. And uh, but I think I think my big frustration with this, other than, of course, we all knew that crime wasn't going down, was that the FBI has really become embarrassingly unreliable. And they tried to blame this having to revise the numbers on local law enforcement. They said, well, we changed our system from uh, uniform crime reporting to something called NIBRS. And they said local law enforcement didn't really catch on to NIBRS. In reality, only about 40 percent of law enforcement agencies are reporting crime to the FBI, not because they don't understand the system, but because they're not going to bother. They're too busy and they're too short staffed because of what has been happening in the last four years. So the thing that people need to look at is not the FBI statistics. It's the National Crime Victimization Survey. That's where the real numbers are. Right. And that's why you're seeing penalties, uh, you know, additional new laws and propositions on the ballot in places like even in California. They're going to vote on whether to have stiffer penalties for retail theft. And uh, and of course, we're seeing uh, what street gangs from Venezuela and Chile taking hold. Juvenile carjacking is through the roof in places like Baltimore in Washington, D.C. And uh, so, yeah, I, I'm glad I was skeptical. I knew crime wasn't going down, but I think everyone in America knew the same thing that I did. Yeah, and even if it does come down a little bit, it had spiked up so much in 2020 and 2021 mm-hmm. that even with some big drops, we're still above where we were in, in many of these statistics in 2019. Right. You can't. We have over 20,000 homicides A year in this country, and that has maintained, that has stayed consistent since 2021. That's just, it's unthinkable. That should not be occurring. And, and of course, we all know why that's happening. Crimes aren't being prosecuted. Police departments are short staffed. And the National Crime Victimization Survey tells us that except for car theft and carjacking and homicide, those, those three crimes, people just aren't even bothering to report when they're burglarized, when they've been the victim of an armed robbery. For over 42% of people don't even bother to report the crime. How sad is that? Well, do we have someone who's compiling the real numbers? Because you're right. If uh, a couple years ago, 
a theft of nine hundred dollars was considered a felony, but now it's not. And someone brags that, well, you know, felony theft is down. Well, the the actual number of thefts of that size may have stayed the same or even gone up. It's mm-hmm. just not counted. So, is there anybody going back and trying to piece those, uh, put those pieces back together? Primarily, private researchers are. Uh, Dr. John Lott is one of the main ones. We know He's him on this show. Right, round of applause. Yep. Yeah, I mean, he's one of the best out there, and he's actually trying to go back and forensically revive these numbers so that we can have, because this is the thing, you've got to have real crime stats to understand how to deploy your law enforcement, how to deploy your emergency service, even even things like your tax base, in part. Our, our, uh, the crime numbers affect all of that. So we can't just say, oh, don't worry about it. Don't worry about crime. We need to know the public deserves to know. And your law enforcement professionals and public safety professionals need to know so that we can get the resources to where they need to be. Tell them about the good work of the National Police Association. I'll tell you what, everybody go to nationalpolice.org. We've got a new book coming out. We've got that free homeschool program you can download. We're having some great success in helping individual officers as well as cities who need us. Hit that donate button and help us support the American law enforcement officer and the people who need us. Thank you very much. Betsy Brantner-Smith, National Police Association. Thanks for your time. Thanks for having me. All right. See, Betsy uh, got to brag a little bit about being right, and she deserved it because she said it on The James Show, and if you were listening, you heard it too. Coming up next, this is just a coincidence. Tell me this is just a coincidence. Donald Trump does a stun at McDonald's. It turns out to be a big success, a huge embarrassing failure for Kamala, and uh, perhaps exposing her, her lie about McDonald's. We don't know. But then in the next 48 hours, we have the Biden Center for Disease Control now all of a sudden investigating McDonald's for an E. coli outbreak. And then yesterday, three Democrat senators get together, release a public letter saying they're going to be investigating McDonald's for price gouging. Hang on a second. That's a hell of a coincidence. Is there a political angle at play? 800-288-9227. We'll talk about that next on The James Show. I'm James Parker. It's News Talk 820 WBAP now on FM at 93.3.